You welcome to this beautiful section of uh, the message we have today. My name again is Reverend Chris Oguala. Um, we want to talk of something that you love to hear, something that is very relevant. Um, I want us to first of all take our text from the scriptures to back it up and then we'll flow. I want to read from Hebrews chapter 1. I'll read a few verses, 1 through verse 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the world. I also would like to read just the first three verses from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the world spoken by the angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. Our topic today says, how shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation? And that is seen in chapter 2, verse number 3. Um, it is a very thought-provoking question, how can we escape? How can we escape if we neglect such great salvation? The writer of Hebrew started um, in chapter 1. He said, God, who in different time spoke to our fathers in different manners and in diverse ways, has spoken to us this day through his son. And uh, he asked a question, how are we going to escape? If we neglect this message, which has come to us. Now, let's go back how God spoke in the time past to our fathers. God spoke to our fathers in different manners and in diverse ways in the Old Testament. God spoke through the prophet majorly, and he spoke through um, Urim and Tommy, it's a special gadget. When they wanted to find the will of God, they consult the Urim or Tommy. And uh, they could know the will of God, the mind of God. And of course, an angel of God spoke to people in the Old Testament. You remember the time somebody wanted to go, a prophet wanted to go and curse the people of Israel whom God blessed already. And he saddled his horse on his way to go and curse the children of God, whom God had already blessed. It's a clear evidence that when God has blessed you, anybody who's cursing you is wasting time. Because if the blessing of God is upon you, the blessing of God is without regret. And on his way, then the horse that he was riding saw something so gigantic, which the rider did not see. And the horse stopped. The, the man of God forced the horse to continue the journey. The horse wouldn't continue the journey. Because there was a very gigantic, formidable angel that stood against the movement of that horse and the movement of the prophet. 
And then the man of God started speaking to the horse. The horse spoke back and said, my master, have I done what is going on? Have I done it before? I saw something. It means the eyes of the prophet was not opened to see what the horse saw. In other words, God could use even the horse to teach somebody something. And then the horse saw what the prophet did not see. May he, come, may he not come to a situation where a horse will see something and we men of God will not be able to see in this generation. The horse saw an angel, gigantic, bigger than what was ongoing, and he stopped. And then the attempt was to stop the man of God from going to curse the people that God has already blessed. If you are blessed, I want to tell you, you are blessed. So God spoke in diverse ways, in different ways. And God honored the message. Those who misbehave and disobey the word of God saw the recompense immediately. And God honored his word. I want to tell you, even at this time, God stands at his word to honor his word, to to, 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 to indicate that what he says that will happen will surely happen. But God has in this time of grace, I spoke about the time of the law. You remember the time of the law also, an angel of God appeared to a man, a man who was a priest. And that is in Luke Gospel chapter 2, and chapter 1 and chapter 2. He spoke to the man of God and said, well, your wife, Elizabeth, is going to give birth and the rest of the day. The man of God will not believe what the angel of God has said to him. And Je Gabriel said to him, oh, look, Zachariah, Zachari, I am an angel standing in the presence of God, and I'm speaking to you, but you wouldn't pay heed. You will not speak until the fulfillment of the prophecy. It is relevant that when the word of God comes forth, when there is a prophetic utterance, we need to believe what the word of God is saying. Because if we don't believe it, we'll see it coming to pass. And God will show us that he stands at his word to fulfill it. So God spoke in different ways, in different manners. But in this last day, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's a better revelation. Jesus is a better revelation. And if God honored the word I spoke through his prophets in the Old Testament, how much more will he then honor the word that we have had from Jesus Christ? John saw Jesus Christ in John chapter 1, verse 29, said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ manifested himself and came to us, and we have seen. Many people are still doubting the existence of Jesus Christ. And they also doubt the existence of God. The Bible says, it is the fool who has said in his heart, there is no God. If you look at the universe and look at the creative acts of God, the creative ability of God, the cosmos, the universe that God has created, how beautiful. Because every house that is being built is built by an architect who designed the whole thing. And that was the man who designed the whole universe. That architect is God himself. He has designed everything. And after you see the whole universe, the beauty that God has created, and you say in your heart, there is no God. The Bible calls such a person a foolish person. I'm not the one who says that you are, a, you are foolish. If you have said in your heart, if your heart has deceived you, and you say there is no God, you are the person who has called yourself foolish. So God has spoken to us today through his word. How do we hear the word of God? There are a lot of people who are preaching the word of God 
There are prophets all around you, good prophets. There are a lot of avalanche of prophets today who go about messing up. It's not the type of prophets I'm talking about. There are also pastors, evangelists, those who stand with the word of God who tell you what the word of God says, not what emotions says, not what people say about. People talk about different things, but we are talking about what the word of God says. Now, you'll be hearing the word of God, and that God is able to save you no matter how you are, no matter how bad you think you look at. And some people have gone into iniquity of this world. They have, they have been flowing the world and doing all atrocities. They wonder in their heart if God can save them any longer. God is able to save you even in the now, if only you can come back. Some people try to procrastinate and say, well, I will think about the word of God just with time. I want to tell you that procrastination is not a, only a thief of time, but it's also a thief of opportunity. I want to tell you now that you have opportunity because you don't know tomorrow. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Now that you have this beautiful opportunity, why not give your life to Jesus Christ? So God has spoken to us through Jesus Christ. The Bible asked us this question we need to ponder about. He says, how can we escape the wrath of God that is going to come upon the world if we neglect such great salvation? The salvation that God has given to us through Jesus Christ, who went to the cross. I'm talking about the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, where he said, it is finished. And I want to tell you that he has done a complete sacrifice. That if we can appropriate the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we will be saved. And the Bible says, how will you be able to escape if you neglect such great salvation? Do not say tomorrow, I will think over what you are saying. Now that you have the opportunity, now you have the time. It is the time you have to make up your mind and say, Jesus Christ, come into my life. You are the way, the truth, and salvation. There is no salvation any other way except through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come. That is in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. There are people who say, well, you can go to God through any other way. It doesn't mean it must not be through Jesus Christ. They said, after all, every road will lead to Jerusalem. I want to tell you, it's not true that every road will lead to Jerusalem. There is a road in my village. It has no link to Jerusalem. I tell you now, Jesus is the only way I know. He's the truth. And there is no other way you can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you hear his word today, harden not your heart. There are people, after hearing the word of God, they are not persuaded. They cannot decide. When God has given you a conscience, the conscience of your heart, continue to tell you that the word is truth, that it's time for you to make up your mind and decide for Jesus Christ. You continue to delay. You don't know when you will end here on earth and it will be too late for you. Assuming you have had this word and you want to say, Jesus Christ, come into my life. This is a great opportunity. Why not say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died because of my sin. Come into my life. Cleanse me of all my iniquities. Sanctify me with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. If you have made that decision, I will briefly want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for people who have heard their word and they have believed your word to be truth. Pray that you might enter into your heart, 
into their hearts and save them and write their names in the book of life and cancel their name in the book of death. Give them salvation which you have accomplished on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for doing this. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister, for the message. This is how we all became born again. We decided in a certain way, just the way I've spoken to you today. May God bless you. And some other time, I'll come back to you. More blessings to you. Amen.